Hi folks, and welcome back. Today we're going to make this procedural model of a magnetic domain wall using geometry nodes. This simple setup will allow you to customize a grid of magnetic moments, as well as control the width and position of a domain wall. We'll also build in a shading system that responds to the orientation of the magnetic moments so that we can visualize the domains and transition regions in the wall more clearly. So there are primarily two types of magnetic domain walls, Neil type and block type. We'll focus on the block type. Here, a domain wall separates a domain with moments pointed up from another where the moments point down. The moments transition across the domain wall through transverse rotations relative to the domain wall normal. To make our model physically grounded, we'll use expressions from a 1D domain wall model where the domain wall lies in the YZ plane. We can then express a magnetization vector M at each X position along the wall normal, as well as factoring in the wall thickness through this parameter delta. So now with the maths out of the way, let's get started. So first things first, let's go ahead and build an arrow that'll be used to show our magnetic moments. Shift A, mesh, and add a cylinder. Scale in Z direction. Remember to control A and apply scale. Press tab into edit mode. Select the top face. I'm going to D to duplicate, scale to make it larger, extrude them in the Z direction, and then S and zero to collapse it all into one point. Toggle on X-ray view, and with vertex selection enabled, select all of the vertices at the top, and press M, merge by distance, to collapse all of those vertices into one vertex. Turn off X-ray view, and right click, apply shade smooth by angle, and let's make sure that's hidden from rendered view. Next, let's go ahead and add a bit of geometry to hold our geometry node setup. I'm going to just add a plane. Let's open up geometry nodes and let's give the mesh a new node tree. And let's just disconnect the input geometry. So the first thing we want to do is create a grid of magnetic moment arrows. So we want to add a mesh grid. And I'm going to create a discrete square lattice of points on which to add these magnetic moment arrows. There are three input parameters I want to define for this. I want two integer values, one for the X and one for the Y, to determine how many lattice parameters worth of points we have in the X and Y directions, and also a lattice parameter. So let's go ahead and first connect out the vertices X and vertices Y. Press N to open up the controls for the inputs, and let's rename vertices X into N subscript X and N subscript Y. We further want to define a lattice parameter, which then multiply by nx and ny will give our size in the x and y. So add a math node, set it to multiply. Let's take the nx value and multiply it with a new input, which I'm going to call lattice parameter. Make sure it's set to float and I want it to only take positive values. So I'm going to set the minimum to zero. I'm going to take this and connect this to the size x. Then I'm going to control shift D to duplicate with connections but just replace the NX connection with NY and then connect that to the size Y. So if I go ahead and output that now, we should have a, a plane. If I preemptively put an instance on points and then bring in the magnetization vector we just created and plug it in as an instance, we should get a grid of magnetization vector arrows. And if we come to the geometry nodes modify tab, we should have control over the number of arrows in the X and Y directions, as well as control their spacing. I'm going to extend this in the X direction because this is the direction in which we want the magnetic moments to transition. Next, we want to express the magnetization vector that we had earlier as a function of now X position. So first, let's go ahead and add a position node and a separate XYZ node. And we want access to the X position. We're going to first take that X position and math divide it by a input value, and this is going to be our domain wall width. Connect out into a group input socket and name this input wall thickness. To be able to control the position of the wall thickness, I also want to have a value that I add or subtract to this X position before we divide it by the wall thickness. So I'm going to just duplicate this math node, change it to subtract, and I'm also going to plug this out to a group input and call this wall position. So if we just quickly look back at the equations, we have no magnetization vector component in the x direction, and so we only need to consider the y and the z components. For the y component, we have inverse cosh of x over wall thickness, and then for the z component, we want the hyperbolic tangent of the x divided by wall thickness. So duplicate our math node with the divide, 
set this to hyperbolic cosine and plug in the output of the divide. We want to have one over the hyperbolic cosine. So do divide one divided by the output of that. And so now I'm just going to frame all of these and I'm going to call this frame my. Then similarly for the z components, very simple. Let's add another math node, set that to hyperbolic tangent and just plug in again the output from our divide earlier. This gives us our mz component. And so now to write out a magnetization vector, all I want is a combined xyz node. Plug in the y, the y, and the z component to the z. And we don't have anything in the x. And so now I want a way to be able to orient these magnetic moment arrows to align with this magnetization vector. And what we want is align Euler to vector. We want the z direction selected and plug in the m vector and the magnetization vector into vector. And set rotation as rotation. Set the wall thickness something reasonable and also set the wall position to something reasonable. If I bring the wall thickness down even more, like 0.5, we now have moments pointing up on the right hand side, transitioning by rotating along the direction of the magnetic moments to a down facing moment. And if we play with this position, we can get transition point to move forwards or backwards along the x axis, which is pretty neat. If we crank up the, the wall thickness, uh, we can get more of those moments to participate. So that's great, um, but if we come to the rendered view, this is in cycles, but I could all equally come to Eevee. What I want is I want a specific color for the moments that point down and another different color for the moments that point upwards and then some transitioning color between the two. So to do that, I'm going to actually store out the MZ value as an attribute that I can call later. So look for a store named attribute node and I want to take this hyperbolic tangent output, plug it in, and I'm going to call this MZ. Just to set up for the shading as well, I also need a Realize Instances node and of course a Set Material node. Come to the shader properties and create a new material. Uh, let's call it Magnetic Moment and select that in the Set Material. And let's go ahead and come to the Shader Editor. So with the Magnetic Moment material selected, you want to look for an attribute node and first just look for the MZ value we had before. Just looking at the color, we can see that the MZ goes from white to black. So we already have some of our color gradient there as by way of a mask. One thing to note though, is that the color value here can only go from zero to one. So black to white, whereas the MZ value that we're piping in goes from minus one to plus one. So we need to actually map this range. So look for a map range node and plug that in. You can leave it as float. And so we're basically saying from a range of minus one to one, go to zero and one so that we can actually map it to color. And so now we get a smooth gradient of color. Now it's just a matter of applying a bit of color. So add a color ramp node, and we can use that to define the color. So I'm going to select blue color for the pointing down, a red color for the pointing up, and that'll already give you some kind of purpley violety transition color. I've often seen though a specific color scheme used for magnetization where there's white in the middle. So I'm just gonna go ahead with white here and throw in a stop for white at the midpoint, a position 0.5. You can just pipe this into the base color, the principal BSDF and connect that out for an actual material. And so there you now have color that depends on the orientation of your moment. But that is basically it for this tutorial, a quick and simple one. As always, please leave a like and a comment if you found this video helpful to your research. Especially, please do leave a comment if there's a specific type of schematic that you want covered. Otherwise, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now.